Hi guys, it's Chelsea and I am about to pick the winners for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. There's going to be two of them. I'm on this website, randomyoutubecommentpicker.com. So, <laughs> I have my computer right here. Alright, let me show you guys what I'm, what I'm doing. I've entered in the URL and here's my video and then I'm going to click this button right here that says pick the winner. Ashley Ward. Okay, Ashley Ward, you were the first winner. And then let's do this again. Winner number two, Zoomer. Thanks. So there you have it. Those are the two winners of my giveaway, Ashley Ward and Zoomer. Thanks. If you would, please send me an email at chelseafork at gmail.com. I'll get your address and I'll mail your prices to you. If no one claims either one of those prizes, I will redraw again and a third person will be picked as the winner. So please email me and I'll send your prizes out to you. But without further ado, I do want to get into the main topic of this video today, which will be an update on my panic disorder. About 10 months ago, when I started traveling, I put out a video about my panic disorder and why it was kind of holding me back from traveling. Fast forward to present day, I want to kind of reflect on that and see if I feel the same way as I used to, what's changed, how I've improved, if I haven't improved at all, and things of that nature. When I put that video out, a couple people accused me of just wanting to get attention. However, that was not my intent at all, and I really didn't get a lot of attention for that purpose. My intention with being open about having panic disorder is to let other people know that they are not alone in this and that they don't have to let panic disorder hold them back. And I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. But for me personally, I thought that panic disorder was going to define me for the rest of my life. I thought my identity was, hi, I'm Chelsea and I have panic disorder. I was consistently embarrassed and consistently scared. And because of that, I was consistently depressed. <laughs> and I was in a mental state where I no longer wanted to be around anywhere. And I think that this is something that's really important to talk about. Um, in general, I think people need to be more open about their mental health and how they're doing and open about asking for help because if we keep this topic a taboo then people will be scared to go and get the help that they need and they not they might not make it through whatever it is that they're going through so this is my intention this is why i'm talking about it i want to normalize the subject of m mental health um in any way that I can and for me the most relatable topic that I have right now is panic disorder. The things that came along with that after living with it for five years. So for those of you guys that are new to my channel and don't know much about my struggle with panic disorder in the past and anxiety in general, let me just give you some backstory here. I was a perfectly fine, perfectly adventurous, little bit high strung person all my life. And then freshman year of college when I was 18 or 19, I can't remember, I got in a car accident. And I was not driving, I was in the passenger seat and we were taking a left turn and the passenger side got T-boned. I ended up having to get surgery done on my nose which is why I currently still have a deviated septum, which is why it turns this way at the end, but I can breathe a little bit better than I could before I got the surgery after the accident. So I didn't realize that this accident had messed with me mentally at all until a little while down the line. Hello? I got interrupted, but I'm going to try to pick up where I left off if I can. I believe what I was saying was that I didn't realize that I was affected by the car accident mentally until a little while after. I obviously started out 
pretty nervous to ride in a car with anybody else driving. I always had to be the one in control um, of my driving. And then it kind of started expanding into these different things. I was really scared to sit in class in college. Um, if the door was closed, I always had to sit at the very front row closest to the door so that I could get out if I needed to. I started feeling like I was going to be trapped all the time or if I knew that there was a place where I had to be, I started getting really panicked. I remember I had a job interview at Abercrombie & Fitch where it was like a group interview and we all had to go in and sit together and it was really casual and they were very nice about it. But I remember that I was like panicking in my head the whole time because I thought, oh god, I have to be here, I'm stuck, I can't leave, I, I have to get this job or, or I have to be in this interview. Like I didn't even care about the job so much as I did, I don't know. I just, it started expanding to different parts of my life and then it got to a point where I developed um, a really big codependency issue or maybe not codependent issue but just a dependency issue on my mother because I needed her to have her phone on her at all times in case I went into a panic attack I needed to be able to contact her so that she could talk me down because I felt like she was the only person that knew what a panic attack was and she was the only person that knew how to talk to me so that I would come out of it because when you are in your fight or flight response and you have a rush of adrenaline going to your body it is extremely hard to break out of that mentality of just being scared for your life because that's what a panic attack is. It's a rush of adrenaline going to your body, sending you into fight or, fight or flight response so that you can either fight whatever is attacking you or run away from it. However, in panic attacks and in panic disorder, there is nothing that is actually going to hurt you. You just think there's something wrong and so you're not expending the energy that your body is giving you to survive and therefore it causes a huge panic. I developed a dependency issue on my mom because I needed her to have her phone and then when she didn't have her phone I would have a panic attack and then it developed even further. When she would leave the house for work I would freak out and then it it was just bad and it escalated so quickly and I was not getting better at all. I was just progressively getting worse and worse and worse and getting more and more scared of everything and I was becoming so miserable. This was not the life that I wanted to live at all. I was embarrassed all the time because if I went into a panic attack and had to like leave or if I was trying to explain what was happening to me, it just felt awful and I felt very trapped in my brain. It was a terrible feeling and I wasn't making progress. So I went to a therapist. And she told me that the reason that I was having panic attacks is because I had a demon inside of me uh, sent by Satan. I was having panic attacks because I did not have a close enough relationship with God. You can't say that as a therapist. I don't know why. This was even a topic of discussion in therapy. I never brought up religion or faith or anything like that. This particular therapist just had an agenda um, to get me into her uh, church. I assume. Needless to say, I, I stopped going to that particular therapist and I kept thinking to myself, is this what it's going to be like? Is this um, therapy? Because if this is therapy, I don't want to go. This is not what I asked for. I don't, I'm not trying to be diagnosed with a demon. I need help. 
because my panic disorder, and this is before I even had a diagnosis. I had no idea what was going on with me. I just thought that I was losing my mind and I was scared of everything. I knew that I was missing out on opportunities all the time because I was consistently saying no to my friends and family because I was too scared to do this, that, or the other. Because of that, I developed serious depression and I didn't want to be here. I had no idea what was wrong with me. And I can articulate this better now that I've been through it, but at the time, I really was just like, I was losing it. And so to be diagnosed with a demon, I had no words. I was like, man, there's no hope for me. Like, I'm not gonna get better. I'm just gonna be diagnosed with a demon. I live in the deep south. Go figure this is like, you know, how this is gonna play out. I'm in the Bible Belt, you know? And I didn't think I was gonna get help. I didn't think that anyone could help me. And so I went to a ner another therapist a little while later. She didn't talk about religion. She actually helped me like a bit. Like she helped me discover what a panic attack actually is. She told me that I um, was having panic attacks and, you know, described that to me. And so then she started saying that the best way for me to look at this is to know what's actually happening in my body when I'm having a panic attack. And then that's when I learned about the fact that it's a rush of adrenaline because of the fight or flight response. I'm not in any actual danger, although it feels like I'm going to die, I won't and that it will pass. And she taught me a couple coping mechanisms to help me get through the time that it, from when it starts to when it ends and just helping it move along and pass. Uh, in a sense, accepting uh, what was happening to me. Uh, she taught me a lot of coping skills. My goal was to stop having panic attacks altogether. My goal was not to feel like this anymore and my second therapist was trying to help me cope with it when it was happening. They were different goals, however, it was still really useful information and it was still a total step up from being told that it was because I had, I had a demon in me. So that was really helpful and I saw her for a while and then can't remember, I can't remember the exact reason why that I stopped seeing her because I thought that I was but I thought that I was like better. I was having before therapy three or four panic attacks a day every day and fast forward two years into my panic disorder I started seeing that second therapist saw her for a while and then stopped seeing her because I thought that I was doing better because I was only having like one panic attack a week at that point and I was getting pretty good at staving them off and during this time I should add that at several points uh, doctors did try to prescribe me medicine for my panic disorder um, such as Lexapro, Klonopin, Prozac and a couple other things however I thought that it was incredibly important that I did not take prescription medicine for panic disorder. I wanted to really learn how to get rid of it by myself in my head and I was thinking of medication as a, a temporary crutch that would not solve my problem but just kind of cover it up for a while and that is just my opinion. I. I do not want anyone to think that they cannot go with a medicinal route if that's what they choose to do. Some people truly need their medication. This was my personal opinion at the time. I don't regret my decision in refusing medication, but I don't want anyone else to think that I'm against it. I am not against medication at all. It was a personal choice. That's just how that went for me. It can be different for anybody. But to continue on, so I thought I had gotten better, so I stopped seeing my second therapist, and then I like relapsed like mentally. I 
just started getting worse again and then was going through a weird time in my life personally with like relationships and in college and things like that. Getting out of a four-year relationship with somebody that was toxic with me. We were not good to each other and there was just a lot happening in that regard and then just trying to get through college. All of it was just really overwhelming and so I was relapsing but still trying to like make it through. I met somebody new. If I get a little bit emotional right now, I apologize. I really don't want to be emotional. I try not to be when I'm talking about my experience. Reflecting on this part of my life and how I felt is kind of difficult sometimes because I'm past this point in my head of what I'm about to reflect on. I don't feel this way anymore, but I know that there are people in the world that feel that way currently, and it breaks my heart to think about anybody feeling uh, the way that I did. So I had gone through this breakup ending um, the last four years of my life. I was relapsing in my panic disorder, and I was trying to finish college, and I met someone new. And then me and this person were hanging out one night, and this was one of the first nights that we were ever hanging out, and I went into a full-blown panic attack. I just remember being like so embarrassed that this person had to witness me just like mentally breaking. I thought to myself like I'm done because I need to change something. I don't want anyone to ever have to deal with me being like this ever again. I'm like the most inconvenient person to have in anyone's life like I'm no fun because I'm too scared to do anything like no one's gonna want to be around me I'm a miserable person to be around so I was like I gotta fix this I thought it's either I fix this and I get help and I stick it out until I know I'm better or I don't want to be here anymore so I did I met Nemetrius. If any of you guys have never been to therapy before, basically how it works is that you reach out to different ones in your insurance coverage or whatever, and you call around and you set up a meeting, like a just like where they get to know you the first time, they find out what your deal is, ask you a couple questions, and figure out whether or not you think you're a good fit for them or they're a good fit for you and you just meet. I went to my meeting, not my first session, just my meeting with this woman. Like a month and a half after I had um, that panic attack in front of the new person that I was interested in being with and this person was really kind in the way that they stuck with me through that. Uh, supported my endeavor to get help and so fast forward to my day meeting Demetrius I came home um, and I call I you know I called this person that I had been talking to kind of starting to date whatever that I don't know if I'm gonna get along with this lady I'm not sure if our personalities click he asked me why and I said because I just think that she's a little bit tough or whatever and then he said he said maybe that's what you need Chels maybe I th he's like I think that you should stick it out and try seeing her again maybe she's not like a gentle how do you feel but maybe it, that is something that you need someone that's a little bit tougher and I said okay I ended up seeing Demetrius for a long time after that and she became the most helpful uh, therapist that I had when it came to panic disorder. She was tough but I, I did need that and um, I because I can be really hard-headed and I can be hard-headed um, and really tough on myself and so it was important to have someone kind of, you know, shake me out of that consistent negative self-talk that I was doing. After I saw her for a while, things were good, 
and I was going to continue seeing her for a long time after that, like still, like I, it had been a long time and I still wanted to keep seeing her and at this point I had been diagnosed with panic disorder for five years but I was getting better and I felt it all the time and I was like slowly gaining confidence back and I was letting other people start to drive me around and I wasn't scared to go to interviews anymore. Anyway, I was gaining more confidence in myself and I finished college and all these things and um, one day I went in for a session and she told me that she was leaving the practice so I wasn't going to be able to see her anymore or have sessions with her. Yeah, so that was the last time I ever saw her. She helped me so much in the while that I saw her. After she left, I was not happy with my life and my what I was doing in my job. I quit and went on this trip. And so now I just want to give you an update about my panic disorder now that I've been on the road for 10 months. Uh, my biggest thing that I can say is to never underestimate the therapy of travel and being in nature. I never in a million years thought that I would be able to, one, leave the town that my mom was in, because that dependency issue I talked about, drive as much as I do, have anyone drive me anywhere, stay in places alone, be outside of my comfort zone at all. I, I never thought that the life that I live today would, would be possible. I thought that I was doomed to live with panic disorder forever. And I'm really happy to say that since being on the road, in the last 10 months, I have had a total of two panic attacks. And that's a really, really, really big deal. And both times I had them, I was like super disappointed in myself because it just like brings you back. You know, you think that you're regressing again and like not gonna make progress, but you are. And I have, and I did make progress. And I just want everybody to know that if you are going through anything Mentally, you can get help for it. It does make a difference and you do learn a lot so that you can apply it to your real life and live the best life possible for you. Which is what I'm doing right now. I'm living my best possible life. I never thought that I'd be able to do that. My update on panic disorder is that I've had two in the last 10 months. I am living the best life that I could imagine for myself right now. I still get really nervous sometimes and I still think about having um, panic attacks sometimes and there are times where I know that I would if I didn't have the coping skills that I learned through therapy. I feel good. I am so happy that I'm still here and I just like, I really want you to know that if you're going through anything there are people that care, there is help for you, and you can get better. You don't have to live with a mental disorder like panic disorder or depression or anxiety. You don't have to live like that forever. It can get better and I just think that it's so important for you to know. And I want you to tell everybody that you know if they're suffering with some type of um, depression or panic disorder or anxiety or whatever, please just talk to them about it. It's so important. I really do hope that we can all normalize mental health in conversation so that people can get the help that they need. And my camera's about to die, so I'm going to go ahead and end it there. But please get help if you think you need it. And then take those skills that you learn and go face your fears like I did and you you can you can do anything that's all for now and uh, I'm sorry this was so long-winded I hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you in the next one